Welcome to another section of this complete NestJS course. In this section, we are going to learn about exception handling in NestJS. And this is going to be a very small section, but an important one. And in this lecture, we will learn what is an exception. And we will also see a simple example of exception. And then we will learn how to handle it. So in NestJS, as in other programming environments, an exception represents an error condition that disrupts the normal flow of program execution. And effectively handling these exceptions is crucial for building a robust and reliable applications. An exception signals that something unexpected or erroneous has occurred during the execution of your code. So remember that exception does not mean only errors. It also means unexpected result. So an exception can range from invalid user input to database connection failures. Now, when an exception is thrown, the normal sequential execution of the program is interrupted. And exception handling provides a mechanism to gracefully manage these errors, preventing the application from crashing and allowing you to provide informative feedback to the user. Now, Let's try to understand what is an exception. So currently our application is running as expected. And that's why if I go to Postman and from here, let's say I want to get all the users. If I make a get request to this endpoint, it will get all the users from the database and it will return it in the response. But now let's say for some reason, the database is not running. It has stopped working. And to simulate that, what I'm going to do is let me open services. And we learned that the PostgreSQL is running as a background service. So here, if I scroll down, I should see this PostgreSQL, this service running in the background. And since this service is running, that's why we are able to connect to and work with PostgreSQL database. Now here, I'm going to stop this service by clicking on this stop button. Okay, so now this service is stopped, but our application does not know that the PostgreSQL database service is stopped. And now if I go to Postman, and if I try to make the request again, you see, we are receiving an error. Now here, an exception has happened. And exception has happened because the database is not up and running. So our NestJS application is not able to connect to the database. But in the response, if you see, we are not getting a meaningful response here. It says internal server error. It does not tell us anything about the issue or the problem which has happened. Here, since the database was not running, our application was not able to connect to the database. So this is the actual problem. This is the exception which has happened in the NestJS application. But our NestJS application is not giving us a meaningful response. So this is an example of exception. Now let's go back to the service and let's start this service. So now the PostgreSQL service is running. So that means our database is up and running. And now if I make the request from the Postman, now we should get the response. So as you can see, we are getting the response. All right. Now, another example of an exception would be, let's go to this tweet. And here I have this get tweet by user request. So here I'm making a get request to get all the tweets made by the user with user ID 11. If I send this request, I'm getting all the tweets which the user with user ID 11 has made. Okay, but now if I specify a user ID with which we do not have a user in the database, for example, if I specify the user ID as 110 in our PostgreSQL database, we don't have any user with user ID 110. So in this case, if I make a request, you will see we are not getting any error. In the response, we are getting an empty array. But what we would have want NestJS application to do is instead of sending an empty array in the response, if the NestJS application was not able to find any tweets for a given user, instead of returning 
an empty array like this, we might have wanted it to return us some meaningful message in the response. Okay, and then another example of exception would be let's open this create user request. Now, when we are going to create a user, if I go to VS Code and if I open the user entity, there we are specifying that when we are going to create a user, the email for that user should be unique. So, in the user table, we should not have two users with the same email and also with the same username. So here, if I try to create a new user with a duplicate username or with a duplicate email, so for example, if I go to Postman, we already have a user in the user table with this email. Now let's simply change the username. So I'll just add one and let's try to create this user. So you see in the response, we are getting this 201 created. But if I go to the table and if I rerun this query, you will see that no user has been created here. And the reason is since we are providing a duplicate email and on the email field, we have added a unique constraint. It is not going to insert that user. But we have not received any such response from NestJS application in Postman. Instead, here we can see that the status code is 201 and it says created. But NestJS should have sent us a response saying that a user with the given email already exists. So these are some of the examples of an exception in a NestJS application. And in this section, we are going to learn how to handle these type of exceptions. And to handle these exceptions, remember that NestJS comes with a lot of built-in HTTP exceptions. So if I open NestJS documentation, and there, if you go to exception filters, and if you scroll down, so in this page, you can learn about exception filters and how to handle exceptions in a NestJS application. And here in this page, if I scroll down, here you will see a list of built-in exception methods. Okay, so this page talks about exception handling inside NestJS application. And here you will see that we have a list of pre-built HTTP exception methods. And these methods are provided by NestJS slash common package. So if you want to use any of these exception methods, you have to import it from this package. And we will see how to use these exception methods. But here you can see a list of all the exceptions already available to you, ready to use. You don't have to pass any extra status code or handle custom exceptions if you want to throw any of these exceptions. Okay, and the list of exceptions which you see here, it covers a lot of use cases. And in most of the cases, you would not need anything outside of this list. Okay, so I just wanted to show you this particular documentation because it will prove to be very useful to you when you're doing exception handling in your application. Now here, let's take an example of one of the built-in exception method. So here I'm going to use this not found exception. So for that, what I'm going to do is, if I go back to Postman and let me close this request. Here I'll say don't save. And let's take an example of this request. So here, when I'm making a request to get all the tweets made by this user, with user ID 110, if we do not have any user with this user ID, then we want to throw an exception. So let's go to VS Code. In there, let me close this user entity.ts file and let's go to this tweet entity. And there, let's go to tweet service. And in here, we have this method get tweets, right? So here I'm going to modify the logic inside this get tweets. So here what I'm going to do is first I'm going to check if in the user table we have a user with the given user ID. And for that I'm going to copy this line from create tweet. Okay, and here instead of using create tweet DTO, I'm going to use this user ID. So first we are checking if we have any user with this user ID. 
then only we will try to find all the tweets for that user id but if we do not have a user with this user id in that case this user will be undefined so here we are going to check if user is a falsy value that means if it is undefined or null in that case i am going to throw a new exception so for that i can say throw new and then the exception which i want to throw and in this case i am going to throw this not found exception so here i am going to throw not found exception here we have the not found exception and in order to use this exception we need to import it from nestjs common and to this we can pass a message and in there let's say user with user id and then here i am going to use the user id which we have received in the request basically this user id is not found okay and since we are throwing an exception from here this not found exception it is going to create a response and it is going to send it to the client in the response the message will be user with the given user id is not found and the status code will be 404 currently when we sent the request the status code was 200 but since a user with the given user id is not found we should get the status code as 404 and also if the user with the user id exists then only this code will be executed otherwise if we do not find any user with the given user id then this if statement will be executed and from there we are throwing a new exception so the rest of the code in that case will not get executed so now if i go back to postman and if i send a request now here we are still getting this empty array in the response and that's because i think here i have not used the not operator so we need to use the not operator here so if the user is a falsy value if it is null or undefined and since we are using this not operator on that it will turn it into a truthy value in that case we want to throw this not found exception so now if i save the changes let's see if the application has built so application has built let's go to postman and now let me make the request with this user id 110 and now you will see that the status code is 404 this means that the resource which we are looking for is not found and in the message you will see that the error is user with user id 110 is not found and the error description is not found status code is 404 so we can use these built-in exception methods in order to handle exceptions in our nestjs application and we just saw an example of how to do that using this not found exception so this was a very simple example of handling an exception using a built-in exception function and remember that we can also create our own custom exceptions and we will learn about it in our coming lectures but this is all i wanted to cover in this lecture from this lecture now i hope that you understand what is an exception and now you also know that nestjs also provides us some built-in exception which we can use in order to handle different types of exceptions in our nestjs application this is all from this lecture if you have any questions then feel free to ask it thank you for listening and have a great day